Thank you. Are we ready? Ready. Good to go? Ready. Okay. Okay, this is the um, Town of Woodbridge Board of Finance regular monthly meeting for Thursday, January 16th, 2014. And Happy New Year to all. Um, and the first item on our agenda is public comments. Mm -hmm. And hearing or seeing nobody. Uh, Number two is Director of Administration and Finance, Tony. Yes. Our um, <clears throat> report is for the first six months of the fiscal year and is results in a budgetary surplus of $83,000 and gives us a fund balance of $4.4 million or about 9.7%. Um, revenues are projected to experience a $136,000 surplus, mainly due to some additional funds from revenue sharing of about $41,000 and um, $120,000 in additional funding from town road aid. We are expecting a short, some shortfalls and some state pilot grants, about $25,000 in total. So that's how you get your $136,000 surplus. Okay. Department revenues are expected to experience a shortfall of $646,000. And there's basically two things in, uh, involved here. The first is there are several items that are actually generating a surplus, which is um, town clerk fees and conveyance fees and zoning permits are ahead of budget and collectively will generate about $151,000 in surplus. Mm -hmm. However, we uh, in the golf course, through December 31st, based on our new arrangement, uh, we stopped taking in revenue uh, for the course. So as a result, compared to the total budget of the year, there's a a uh, revenue deficit of $797,000. Uh, so combined is where you get the 646. There is an expenditure uh, surplus also, which we'll get into on the next uh, sheet, but that's sort of the impact on the revenue side of the budget, which um, I know you guys track regularly. Uh, interest income is uh, slightly off of our projections, continues to be for several years. Now on expenses, the, the country club uh, also, there are several items here for expenditures, which I want to point out. Uh, the first is the uh, under the old Billy Casper golf contract, we we generate expenditures for all golf operations through December 31st. It's about $845,000. In addition, we owe six months of the of the new contract, which is $95,000, and we will incur expenses to uh, maintain the clubhouse and operate the clubhouse should be about $30,000, mostly electricity, some heat, um, security, those types of, uh, of the items. Um, so uh, based on a budget of $1.448 million for the country club, that will be a surplus of about $478,000. So if you combine the two, essentially there's a, um, a deficit in, in total of about $319,000. Hopefully that's easy to follow, but I wanted to separate the revenues from the expenses so that you can see that there's a, a deficit, significant, significant deficit in revenues, slight surplus in revenues, uh, in expenses rather, gives you the um, deficit of about $319,000. But that, that's, that's a um, pretty <coughs> solid uh, guess because we don't have to now worry about the uh, weather in the spring mm -hmm. or any overruns and expenses or anything of that nature for the golf course because it's <clears throat> as you know Billy Casper's responsibility so what was our deficit um, at the end of our fiscal year for the country club for this year coming up for, no for, oh, last, for last, last year last year, last year was 435,000 okay so this represents a decline of right 110,000 right so right 115,000 correct and um, and, and more importantly, it's um, one of the items we we had in our um, in our, our Moody's uh, review mm -hmm. that they were watching the um, unpredictability of the revenues for the golf course, mm -hmm. and um, so this is something that's more stable and more and easier to plan for. Was that oh, revenues and expenses? Yeah, revenues that, and expenses. That, yeah. That Moody's was concerned. If, if I, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, one of the big concerns about the past contract with Billy Casper was the uncertainty Correct. about what our liabilities would mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And after the amended contract, which I thank all these board members for, for support and help, um, 
we know exactly what we will be spending so we don't face that uncertainty. And the, as you know, the number is something much more manageable for us. Right. And so that number will be built into next year's budget. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we don't anticipate right. then any type of a loss Correct. for right. fiscal year 15. Right. Okay. So Correct. I think in, in perspective, I mean, we keep working away at this until, you know, the liability is very small. Okay. Right. Thank you. Exactly. And there, exactly. At some point, there actually could be a profit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, lastly, we have a... <coughs> A um, surplus in health care, uh, mainly health care, but employee benefits of about $65,000. Any questions on the monthly report? You don't see any headaches out there in the future? Things are so far looking okay? Yeah, we're keeping an eye on our um, our snow budget okay. for snow removal. Um, so as a result, we're real, you know we have contingency of 120 roughly. Okay. So we're sort of keeping that. And I am that. Probably one of our bigger items. Yeah, we do in February. We got bond months. We did. One store, so. We did. It could, all it takes is a couple of Sunday storms. Yeah, mm -hmm. And a couple of long Sunday storms. And, <coughs> yeah, and right. you know, we'll spend a lot. Of, we could spend a lot, yeah. Okay. How are we done with the audit? Done? All right, it's done. Uh, Scott Bassett will be here uh, next first Thursday. Thursday. Next Thursday, yeah. And uh, you have handed out this evening the audit, the state and federal report. And the report to the Board of Finance. Um, well, and uh, so you can bring those with you next Thursday so that we can um, review them with Scott when he comes. Okay. Woodbridge Board of Ed, I'm sure Sandy's going to cover this. But there appears to be a surplus, which mm -hmm. <coughs> talk about. Reminder next Thursday is our first budget meeting. Following Tuesday, the following Thursday, and we're going to do our best to keep it at three. And just in your front, there's a pocket in the front cover of the schedule. Is there? Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else, Tom? Nope. That's it. Okay. Approval of minutes of the December 16th regular Board of Finance meeting. I will move acceptance of the minutes of the December 16th, 2013 Board of Finance meeting as presented. Second. Any adjustments, corrections, suggestions, anything at all? I just want to check if I was at that meeting. Um, no, you were not. No, 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 you were not. I was in California. You were not. Okay. No, you weren't there, though. Thanks. No, I remember you weren't there. You were there. I do remember you were saying that. I remember about that. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? <coughs> okay. <coughs> First selectman's report, Alan. I was just going to give the update on the billing pass for amendment, which we've already touched on. And just to say again how uh, pleased I am that we were able to come to an amicable amendment to the agreement with Billy Casper that gives us a some certain going forward, it caps our liability, and it does provide for sharing in some upside profits if we get to a certain point. So, um, and then as Tony pointed out, it helps us with our bond rating and our credit rating because we have now, we don't have the uncertainty of the prior contract. I think we're, we're in a very good place for the short term as we contemplate next steps. And we're very interested in hearing what yes. those gentlemen have to say tonight because it's, it's something we've been waiting for. So, Okay, liaison reports. <coughs> I attended the Amity uh, meeting Monday. A lot of things happened. First of all, uh, they announced uh, that they have hired a new superintendent. How do you pronounce his last name, Paula? Do you know? You don't know either. Okay. <laughs> it's Charles D-U-M-A-I-S, I believe, something like that. Dumas, maybe? Dumais? They call him Chip. His name is Chip. <laughs> he is, um, uh, Mike Nast is very excited about him, and so is Bill Blake. I spoke to them both. <coughs> he is currently the superintendent, the principal of Newtown High School, and um, he's got a great deal of um, administrative uh, background. He was also, I believe, a, assistant principal at Staples High School, and from what I can gather, John Brady was involved in hiring him at Staples before he left, so John knows him very well, and uh, very energetic from what I understand, 
a lot of very they feel as good about as, as uh, about him as they do of, did of Brady. So that's a good thing. And I guess uh, Mike Nass. I talked to Mike today, and next week he, Chip, and John Brady's going to come and sit in. And the three of them are going to meet. John's here for a few days before yeah. he before he goes on his next journey. He's he's enjoying life. So um, so that's good news. We uh, got got that out of the way. And supposedly I asked why he didn't apply the first time first go around and they said that he was still committed to Newtown so he didn't want to get involved back in August or September so but now he feels he can, he's, he, it's time for him to move on so <coughs> sounds like a, a good hire uh, financially the Amity uh, audit um, was presented and approved again for those of us who remember to have the audit done before on time was something we never had, so it's, things are much better. It was a very clean report. Um, <coughs> the budget, as of December 31st, is showing a $508,000 surplus, which is good. But they had a big increase in state grants, which they didn't anticipate. You know, it's, 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 uh, I guess it's difficult to, to anticipate these things, so it was like a $300,000 unexpected boost. So they're but that money might need, might be needed because there's some concern. Of course, they have a self-insured health plan, and they've got some enormous claims. Uh, so there's some concern that they might need additional funds in their uh, in their health insurance reserve account. So uh, that they're, they're talking about that, and maybe some of this surplus could go for that. As far as um, other financial information, um, they approved with the approval of the audit came the approval of the surplus of 398285 uh, which was agreed on to, that would be returned to the three towns, and Woodbridge's share of that is 118396 We received it I, today, actually. Oh, you got it already? <laughs> yeah. Very good. <clears throat> okay, as far as the budget goes, um, the budget as currently situated represents a, this is the 2014-2015 budget, it currently projects an increase of 3.1 percent, um, which is more than it's been, but as Mike Nass said, sooner or later it's going to catch up to you. You can't always have 1 percent, but um, same, the exact same issues you're going to hear from Beecher, salaries, benefits, mm -hmm. special ed. Mm -hmm. All the other accounts are actually down. So Woodbridge's share of that will be an increase of, <coughs> it's a 2.42 percent increase, or 313,762. The big, the big, uh, <laughs> the big uh, increase this year goes to Bethany. Actually, orange is less than ours, but Bethany's increase is going to be 6.61 percent, oh or God. close to $600,000, <laughs> mainly because of shifts in the uh, student population, so I'm sure they're going to be really thrilled. So, so again, this could change. Uh, you know, they're always they're always looking for areas to cut, but there's not a, there's not much new stuff in this budget. Like I said, it's same old story with education. So, but I'll keep you posted on that. And that is about it, Mike. Uh, <coughs> the fire commission met on Monday. Uh, just bring you up to date on the current operating budget. Um, everything looks in line uh, except for this one line item of uh, repair and maintenance to the building. They're looking, um, the bay needs a new filter system, so they're looking into pricing that. I think they've talked to you about mm -hmm. that, as well as um, uh, modules needed for a battery backup. To, uh, there's a battery backup <laughs> system that sort of takes care of when the power goes out and before the generator kicks in. Right? There's like a seven second gap and they have, mm -hmm. a, they have a battery backup for that and they need <clears throat> modules and it looks like they, they uh, are going to need that soon. Um, and then in terms of budget, uh, they approved the operating budget and it's approximately a 5% increase, mainly supplies and, and, and increased supplies and things of that nature. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Karen? The EMS did not meet a, a human services map on the 6th. And um, 
the after school cooking program began. Um, the parent support group I mentioned last um, month has been very successful and this appears to be a really well uh, appreciated resource in the town for parents um, at the high school who could use a little extra help and, and guidance and just getting together. So uh, it's kind of nice that that's been provided. Um, a faculty student volleyball tournament fundraiser is planned for January 24th and that's going to benefit the district um, animal control. But the meeting basically focused on the budget and uh, don't want to spoil their presentation, but um, everything is pretty much in line except for um, and the, the significant increase in the operating budget is due to the renovations to, I believe it's room 213, um, that will be renovated when the Department of Public Works vacates and um, the senior center is using that room. And I believe it was due to a timing issue that that wasn't in the capital budget that was available sooner. So it, um, I think with some discussion with you, it's going to be in the operating budget for that one-time expenditure to get that room um, just ready for the functioning for the human services. And there, I expect an email actually tomorrow to detail the usage and some of the costs uh, associated with that, but that will be presented on Thursday also. Okay. Sir? Uh, Police Commission met on January 8th. The portion meeting was an executive session, but the poll highlights that we have two new officers in training, and it'll be 26 weeks before they're going to be available for duty. And in terms of budget, one of the things that was a very outstanding in their budget was a large increase in overtime. Now, I guess I know they've been talking to Tony about this, and they've met with Tony, but I mean, there seems to be something that uh, they're picking up all the uh, overtime uh, uh, for the Public Works Department in terms of flagging for the Public Works right. Department. Right, we, we've actually discussed this and we've resolved that issue. So there should be an, ad a, an adjustment to that account. And be a large adjustment to that account? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yes. All right. So my report is complete. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm happy. <laughs> David? Uh, but I just I have a, a, yeah. quick, a quick question. So the flagging that the police department does is covered by the public is covered by the public works budget. The the flagging that the police, if the police is required for traffic duties, right. um, for public works, it's still paid out of the police budget. Okay. At least that's currently structured, because it's still <laughs> police overtime. Yeah. yeah. So um, w the adjustment was that um, to be more diligent about exactly when police are needed versus when you can use flaggers okay. as opposed to using police using for everything okay. that's the that was the change which will save a lot of money and if i can clarify it, it is a change in practice the the policy all along had been that it should be police when needed but it became routine. right that's correct right so now it it's will not going be back routine. to right and once precedents get set, right. it's yeah. very difficult mm -hmm. to right. change. So I think it was very important that be addressed. Yeah. It seemed actually, it, it actually seemed um, that it wasn't, um, that there wasn't really a precedent. Sometimes you see police out there and sometimes you don't. At least over the summer when there was a lot of public works projects, I didn't see police when I anticipated that I would. Did you see other flaggers or you just didn't see anyone? I didn't see anyone. Uh, <coughs> David, you have anything? Uh, I was not able to attend the last part commission meeting. Okay, so good. Uh, on Monday, the library commission met, and from a budgetary perspective, they're doing just fine. And I don't want to steal any of Todd's thunder, just <laughs> like Aaron. Yeah, that's good. And you'll you'll have a really nice presentation. I think you'll be really pleased in terms of um, really what they're offering the community and the use of the library. There's one program I want to point out because I just think it's terrific. It's called Conversational Reading. And um, I did talk about uh, this a little bit in the past, but this is actually a collaboration between the high school and the elementary school where they pick out um, a number of books for um, children to read. And this is in grades um, kindergarten through two. 
and um, this is going to be on a Saturday morning, and they're going to train high school kids um, in grades 9 through 12 to actually enter into conversations with the students about the books. Um, so they can, it's a language builder, but also um, really sets the notion that um, you know, talking and learning about how to converse about what you read and learn is really important. So I just think it's a terrific program. Is this one on one to one? It's one to one. It's one on one. Yeah. So um, and that will start actually. Um, they'll do the training in March, and the actual Saturdays um, where the the teens and the kids will be together will be in April. So and um, Bethany is now on board for Ryan, and um, uh, Todd is actually the liaison for kind of bringing Bethany online and. Uh, Hamden will probably come on board, but that won't be till August later in the year, and then they're kind of stopping their additions um, to Lyon. They don't want to get too big. So, uh, And then the um, Finance Committee met for the Board of Ed on Monday also, and there is a $67,350 um, positive bottom line, and most of that is due to the uh, math teacher position that um, was vacated due to um, a retirement. Um, and again, they are filling that, but it's not with a full-time person because it was after the school year had actually started. And, and I'm sorry, it's not a retirement. The person actually left. So um, all of their uh, uh, cash operations with um, the cafeteria, extended day and field trips all have a positive bottom line. There are no issues with that from a budgetary perspective. Um, the uh, Finance Committee will request of the audit next year that they specifically go in and monitor the procedures for those cash operations so you'll know that that request is coming. Okay. Um, the other two things is that there has been difficulties with release, I guess, of the strategic school profile and they're just waiting for the state. They just keep pushing it, you know, month after month and there's an interim person in charge and so we don't really know when we will receive that. Um, and in terms of the calendar for next year, I guess the state is going to be mandating um, vacation days um, and a whole host of other um, restrictions. Maybe, Margaret, you know better than I do. Yeah, um, <coughs> it's, they're trying to regionalize the calendars. It's the last, so we're tied to, you know, a calendar for a much larger region. They're trying to regionalize the, the calendar, and so we have to, we right. have to follow that calendar. So it'll impose a few more restrictions than what we had in the past in terms of days off, vacations, things like that. I so that applies to Amity as well. Yeah. It probably oh, does. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So and that's it. Okay. Anything else? <clears throat> okay, we um, of course are gonna be joined by the well, I don't know, we're gonna join the board of selectmen right. at the meeting to discuss the Beecher Road project. Mm -hmm. Six thirty. Six thirty, so I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.